There she go. Where the fuck you been? I've been calling you. You didn't cook any dinner. It's dinner at 9 o'clock. I'm still waiting to eat. If you ain't cooking for me, you must be cooking for someone else. Stop looking at me like that. Get in this fucking kitchen and cook something. And no, I don't want to order in. Cook something. Cook something. And stop standing there looking like a dumb bitch. beautiful people this is your girl Ingrid of I Divine Beauty and I am here with the director executive producer the writer and star of the award-winning film a deliberate bitch if you have read any of Zane's books you will love this short film if you have seen Fifty Shades of Grey I'm telling you this is the movie for you it has all of that drama plus the heart and soul because it follows the journey of a black woman through life, love, and just relationships. And so without further ado, I would like to introduce you guys to these amazing people. Let's get into it. It's that too. Yes. So indeed. you have actually worked on quite a few major projects. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us some of your experience? Well, to we answer your question on the things that I've done. I've worked on film with DMX, Lou Diamond Field, Keisha and I Polar, which is uh, Death Toad. Worked on another film uh, locally here in New Orleans, Lo and Behold, and as a day player, uh, Treme, HBO special. This 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 film of the of Deliverant Bitch, also with the book Deliverant Bitch, is definitely one of Miss Marcia Dorsey's uh, mind. And I, 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 I think it's a beautiful story. And this is your first directorial debut that you actually won an award for. The, the film, the short film is award winning film. We, we did this film in such a, a short period of time to uh, meet the deadline. You know, you have deadlines at these, uh, these film festivals. And we were able to put this thing together, I guess, in about three weeks. <laughs> we cast it. Uh, we auditioned, uh, we rehearsed, and we shot. And it was just, I mean, everything was organic. Everything was on the, the, the right tempo. We had some people that, that just, at the last minute, they left us stranded, but we kept on pushing and, and prevailing through. You know, it was just like a nonstop. We felt like a, a locomotive and a Mack truck all at one time, just steamrolling and through to get this thing done. I'm so excited that uh, we were able to get it done and meet meet a deadline. Not only meet the deadline, win first in our category, which is a big thing. Uh, we have recognized they have recognized us for the technical uh, difficulty uh, of putting it on a short short period of time. Um, the cast, the people to do the produ the full production, which was all put on myself. So I'm doing works of. 50 to uh, 300 people on it, if I, if you will, and we got it done. You know, we, we, we heard all the naysayers saying it couldn't get done. You're not going to be able to get this done. You're not going to, no, I, I'll tell you guys, if you have it in your heart, just go out there and do it and don't stop. Don't listen to anyone else. Just keep on moving and keep on grooving. And you, you get the right, the right formula, the right, the right 
ingredients in your gumbo and man just bon appetit man this is what sure you are I, I listen I'm, I'm so elated right now I don't, I'm, I'm I got the chi I have chills right now so I'm with you and um, and I'm with my the cast and it's, it's just a beautiful thing for us to, to reach and receive this type of accolade in such a quick uh, rapid turnaround you know I'm really happy about that but it, nevertheless it's hard work we just didn't get we just didn't give up and this is another uh, testament of, of our work of us being here with you today so speaking of the character Kelly who is so dynamic and diverse how did we come up to select Miss Denise well uh, after we uh, we we met Denise at a meetup and um, she greeted us as we came through the door and she was pretty friendly. And um, when I talked to her, she had that vibe, you know, that one where I'm, I'm a professional, I own my own business, uh, I'm smart, you know, um, warm. It's perfect. Yeah. She, uh, and, and I guess, I don't know, maybe it's her spirit, but it's some kind of way we connected mm -hmm. on, on that level. And, I, and she had the perfect look, the perfect attitude, the perfect, she was the perfect Kelly. So you knew you found your Kelly. She was only, uh, we, don't get me wrong, we auditioned other people before the role of Kelly. But before we left the meetup, I was telling Dad Tim, the director, that she was going to be Kelly. Okay, Miss Kelly, Miss Denise, baby, you pulled this role off. Like, I couldn't even see anyone else doing it, okay? So tell me, how did you prepare for Kelly? Did you see yourself in her? Did you have to reach outside of yourself to portray Kelly? I think Kelly is every woman, you know. Kelly is, she's strong, but yet she's weak. Mm -hmm. So we all have those characteristics about ourselves. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, I can do this. Because somewhere down the road, I had that moment. Yeah. Like, girl, what's up with you? Why are you doing that? And then I had that moment where I pulled through, you know, so it was easy to be Kelly. Yes, so it was fun too, right? It was fun too. Because you oh, have yeah, some I real felt like... juicy <laughs> stuff. Yes, yes. And some real like iconic shots yes. that you were able to do and take in that role. I had an exhale moment, okay? <laughs> yes, so this is not actually your first role. You've had a couple of roles in, in movies that you have been featured in. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I've been blessed to have some awesome featured scenes. Um, I worked on King Sugar. I was Councilwoman Abbott, so that was exciting. Um, I worked on When the Bows Break, and I was in the scene with Regina Hall during the baby shower, so I, you know, that was a great scene. Uh, Claws. I've had some awesome um, featured scenes on Claws. And the, the blessing is they call me for these things. It's yeah. not like I, you know, try and submit. I started out doing just background work, but I always knew I need to be that woman that stood out. I could never just be background. I'd get on there and, I mean, I had to be seen. Yes. And it started working for me. I started getting these phone calls at 2, 3 in the morning. I mean, 2, 3 during the day. We need you on set. And I'm like, the universe is, you know, when you take a step, that's and you give that energy, it. put that energy out there, it comes back. Yes. So I knew I was on to something. So I, this is my journey. You know, yes. I'm, I'm not surprised by it. The only thing that I might say I'm surprised by is how soon it happened. Yes. But the journey, the journey. That's right. So share with, share with our viewers. In your place in life right now, how do you stay encouraged? How do you find your desire and drive to continue to chase your dreams to the point of going from being featured to starring? You know what I always tell people, the people that always have a sad story, I always tell them God gave us all a talent. 
And I tell them about the three men in the Bible that God gave those talents, which was coins too. And he said, what are you going to do with those? So I choose to take mine, not bury it, not save it, but I choose to make it grow, invest in it. So that's who I am and that's where I am in life. I'm investing in what God has given to me to grow. I love it, I love it, I love it so much. And it's so inspiring to watch, you know, because so many people get discouraged and dismayed. And you told me several months ago, you said, Ingrid, I'm an actress and I'm gonna keep on. And check you out. Check you out. Glory to God. someone that I can partner up with and be able to go to different meetings and different functions. So we go to Mandeville and we go to the meetup. Walk in and I'm going to be real with you. We walk in, we're the only black. So you're uncomfortable, but I'm like, you know what? You got to do what you need to do to get where you're going. So we go on in and what I'm saying that to say when that Tim and Marcia walks in, I said, I'm going to speak to every black that come in because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable the way I felt. So when they came, they probably thought, who is this greeter? Like Walmart door greeter or somebody. But I was like, hey, how y'all doing? And uh, after the meeting, everybody is socializing and uh, Tim had spoke and he said that he was going to be doing the film and Marcia, the author, she spoke about the book. And from there, we just hit it off and it's been great. I went audition and I'm telling you, um, you're going to see some amazing things through this book and through the work ethic that that Tim has. He will push you and get you where you're going. And so I feel like uh, he really is. Between Marcy and Tim, they're what God sent for me because that's what I asked. And it's like I'm living in this manifestation of a vision you know you, yeah. you visualize then you manifest yes and that's where i'm at so that's how i met too <laughs> marcia dorsey presents a deliberate bitch a novel and winner of the best short competition the thought of not being tormented by love was almost the perfect plan the one moment took it all away a Deliberate Bitch, written by Marcia Dorsey. This book will blow you away. My book is called The Deliberate Bitch, and I want everybody to understand when they pick up a copy is that this is not a love story. Actually, it's about domestic violence in its most subtle beginnings. Um, I had to ask myself a question, and that question was first, what is love? And then how do we learn to love? Well, I had discovered that there are eight different phases of love. We don't experience them all at the same time. But our love experience begins with our parents. Um, the, who are in our immediate circle. They also are our people we go to church with, people we go to school with, high school, and it just graduates and changes as our interactions change with people. Um, then uh, after high school and college, you start to have uh, relationships, be it uh, physical, dating, marriage. You have relationships with people. Kelly, because of the way she learned to love, 
uh, stays a virgin until she's 22, which I think is pitiful. <laughs> I'm not about to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, and then what happens is um, she wants, it's so important to her to feel loved by the person that she wants to be loved by. And, and that's a big statement because we, we get loved by people all the time, but if it's just not that person, it really doesn't mean anything. That's right. You know, so uh, she meets Eric, uh, the man of her dreams, who turned out to be a jerk. We, uh, the book starts off with what I call um, beginning with the end in mind. So I want everybody to know that the first and last chapter is exactly the same, except for where she is in the love cycle is different. Um, Kelly uh, is a professional. She's a black woman. She earned her stripes. She was getting promoted on a Monday. By the time she got home, her life went to hell in a handbasket. So. So speaking of. Oh, the title? Kelly. Okay, we can talk about Kelly. Speaking of Kelly. all of that going on in her story, how did you choose the title, A Deliberate Bitch? By accident. Uh. I was in a relationship with a man who uh, called me a bitch so often, I had to call my mother on the phone and, and ask her what was the name of my birth certificate. <laughs> and I said, Ma, please, can you read it? Can you go get it? Can you read it? And she said, well, Marcia, why? I said, because, um, Every time I turn around when this man get mad with me, and I use the N-word, uh, he wants to call me a bitch, so I thought maybe he knew something about my, my birth, I didn't. And uh, he shoved me one day. And I looked at him and I told him, I said, look, I said, if I have to be a bitch, I'm gonna be a deliberate bitch. Mm -hmm. um, and I planned to leave him mm -hmm. because I just felt like he was just getting up enough courage to hit me. So I went and found me someplace to live, I packed my stuff and I moved out. Um, how this book came up about was I was preparing the poem that, uh, that Tim was talking about for another book. And uh, he had stopped by to say hey and he read it and uh, like we all know he came back with the script. Well, uh, it, 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 it made me delve deeper into what the real meaning is. And what I want people to take away from the story, besides all of the good sex, <laughs> <laughs> what I want people to take away from the story is to help them identify what cycle they are in in the um, domestic violence mm -hmm. uh, network, if you will. Um, it's so necessary. It's such yes. a necessary conversation. Yes, because see, we, we don't recognize the things that we accept because they are masked by the, the, way, the th way we are, uh, learn to love. I just gotta let you guys know, like, it is such an honor. I'm always just in awe of New Orleans, Louisiana creators, because our girl over here is Slidell, but that's New Orleans, I don't care about that. <laughs> but no, just to see creatives, to see that you guys have, in three weeks, written, produced, directed, executed, shot, and submitted the film, one first place in your category. I'm just saying, that is the epitome of black excellence. You guys should be so proud of yourselves. And to say that y'all are from the boot, represent two, two. <laughs> represent two, two. And it, it's just encouraging and it's inspiring because there are so many young people who want to either be in movies or create movies, write, produce, and direct. And the, the, the message is, if you want it, do it. Don't wait. Don't wait right. no And time. don't let a lack of knowledge stop you right okay and um, I, I just want to say without the creative vision of the executive director who 
guided us along the way, yes. we wouldn't have never gotten this far. So dream big, dream large, and do. Dream big, dream large, and do. Don't quit. Yes. Don't quit. I say know what to ask God for. Ask God to surround you with the right people to do the right things to get where you're going. And, it's and, important. And on, the, on, on that note too, I would like to add, you know, if you, do, if you are a true believer in Christ and God, like we all are, you know, it's not actually to be holy rollers, but to believe and have the faith. You know, because in, I know in Jeremiah tells you just to glorify God. And if you're focusing on that, everything is going to follow. You can't say, I believe in God today and be afraid of the unknown tomorrow. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us up here in our own right are doers. If you're using, I'm trying to do, that doesn't even work. You're either doing it or you're not. You know? Absolutely, so, absolutely. That's what we are. So you have all just taken place and witnessed black excellence. The cast, the writers, the producer, and directors of a deliberate bitch have created history by within three weeks having written, directed, produced, casted, shot, and submitted, and won an award for best short film. You feel me? Like, that's major. And they affirm your negative words, they affirm your city, your town. And if you feel the need to want to create, just go and do it. Don't stop, don't wait, don't hold off, because guess what? Your time is now, your gift is here, and it is for you to make it happen.